Hello, my name is Luis Montoliu and I work at the National Center for Biotechnology. And today I would like to present you this talk about generating animal models with CRISPR tools to develop therapies for albinism. CRISPR is probably a popular word that has appeared in newspapers, in the radio, in television. You probably heard this word CRISPR because it's almost everywhere. It is not only applied to clinical conditions and to biomedicine, but it's also applied to biology and to biotechnology, to plants, to animals, or the monitoring and control of plagues that are transmitting uh, diseases like malaria, etc. So CRISPR are genome editing tools. What does it mean, editing tools? Well, I guess the best way of understanding a genome editing tool is to consider what we do when we are typing, when we are writing a text with a computer. So let's consider this phrase. Albinism is a genetic condition, not a disease. Obviously, I committed a mistake, and this is something that very often occurs. So the first thing, when I realize there is a mistake, we need to fix, we need to correct this mistake. The first thing is to realize what is wrong. So this M, this letter M shouldn't be here, so we'll be erasing, we will be deleting this letter. And once we have deleted this letter, we have to call in the replacement. We have to call in the correct letter. In this case, this will be the letter N. So as soon as we reintroduce the letter N in the correct place, then the phrase is now grammarly correctly written. We have edited this phrase, as simple as this. So let's imagine now that instead of editing phrases, we could edit our genome. We could edit our DNA. Remember, the DNA is a double helix in which each strand has many letters, but these letters are of only four types. There are A's, T's, G's, and C's. As you can see, A always lies in front of a T, and G always lies in front of a C. How many of these letters do we have in our genome, in our cells? Well, in each of our cells, we have 3,000 million base pairs, what our US colleagues, they will say 3 billion base pairs. These are distributed in the 23 pairs of our chromosomes, and altogether they account and they include roughly around 20,000 genes. Among these 20,000 genes, we have the genes that when they stop working, it causes these genetic conditions that you are all well aware, albinism. As far as we know currently, and particularly thanks to the efforts of Benoit Weiler Laboratory in Bordeaux, we have at least 21 genes associated with 22 types of albinism that are currently known, as you can see now in this table. So we have OCAs, oculocotaneous albinism, one to eight. We have ocular albinism. We have FONDA, which is a syndromic type. And then we have the proper syndromic types, which are CHS, the Chedikihashi syndrome, and HPS, which are hermans putlak syndrome from one to 11. So what are the CRISPR from, where are, where are they coming from? Well, they're coming from bacteria, and they're coming thanks to the investigations by this colleague of mine. This is Francisco Juan Martinez Mojica, Francis Mojica. He's a macrobiologist from the University of Alicante. And he, 27 years ago, in 1993, was studying this sort of bacteria that were living in these salt ponds of Santa Pola, near Alicante. He realized that they had a very peculiar sequence in their genomes, and upon studying this sequence, he eventually came to the conclusion that that was an immune defense system 
that the bacteria were using to defend themselves against the infection by the viruses. These bacteriophages, which are the viruses that are attacking cells, the bacteria, they can defend against these viruses with the help of this CRISPR system. Seven years later, in 2012, these two researchers, Emmanuel Charpentier on the left and Jennifer Downer on the right, they realized, they were the first to realize that the very same system that the bacteria are using to defend against the viruses can be used to edit our DNA. This led us to awarding them in 2020, actually in October, last month, this Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the development of a method for genome editing, thereby using these CRISPR tools. For more than 20 years, not only Manuel Charpentier and Jennifer Tauna, but also other scientists, as many as 12 and many more, have been contributing and have been allowing these developments to progress in order to convert this bacterial defense system into a proper genome editing tool. So this is how it looks, a CRISPR-Cas system. It is uh, formed by this yellow patch. This is a protein, it's a nuclease. It means it cuts the DNA, but it doesn't cut everywhere. It only cuts where another genetic molecule, this blue molecule, an RNA molecule, is telling the nuclease, it's indicating the nuclease where to cut. So this is why we call this genetic or genome editing tools programmable, because they you can change the guide RNA, this blue molecule, and eventually the molecule will cut in another gene. So this is what happens. These systems, they cut DNA, and upon cutting DNA, these double strand cuts, they need to be repaired. Can be repaired in two different ways. Firstly, you can repair a double strand cut by adding and deleting letters randomly, hoping that you will get some homology an A in front of a T or a G in front of a Z, so that you can restore the physical continuity. Of course, because you have deleted or added letters, the gene you have been cutting will stop working and you will be disrupting the gene. But the most important thing you can do to repair is to provide a template. To provide a template that will be pairing left and right of this cut and might be adding sequence de novo. This blue sequence, which wasn't there, now is there and eventually you can edit. You can add a new mutation and you can remove mutations. Actually, you can delete, you can insert, you can replace, you can modify, you can label, you can do almost as many things as much as you want with these CRISPR tools. The limit is your imagination. So we have been using animal models for many years to investigate albinism. Particularly, we have been using mice. Mice as animal models for albinism. In particular, we have been creating different types of genetically modified mice, transgenic and mutant mice, that have been instrumental to investigate and to understand different types of albinism, particularly the most common type of albinism in Europe, which is OCA1, Oculocutaneous albinism type 1. With CRISPR, we can do other things. We can do things that we couldn't do before with our genetic tools. With our previous genetic tools, we could not reproduce exactly the same human genetic mutations that we found in our patients, and we we couldn't transfer this into mice. Now with CRISPR, we can do this. And this is why I call this method avatar mice, because I'm using a metaphor of this science fiction movie in which these blue, uh, blue uh, uh, characters were connected with different human beings. 
we have been doing many different avatar mice. This is one of the first we did. This is Patty. This is a person with Ocolocotanius albinus type 4. What has, she has a particular mutation in which the gene affected SLC45A2. She is missing only one letter at a given position. This C is the only thing that she's missing, and that's why she is a person with albinism. We have transmitted the same deficiency. We have deleted the same letter, the same C, in the mouse that is shown. You can see and you can watch this process. There is a YouTube video in which you can investigate and you can see how we were introducing and her avatar to Patty in a visit that she was doing in our center. So what do we do with uh, this avatar? We can validate treatments. We can use them to validate, let's say, with small molecules such as L-DOPA or with uh, reposition in uh, uh, medicaments or drugs as the nitisinone. Of course, we need to be aware of limitations. Not, not everything is possible with CRISPR because we can, we can run the risk to edit similar genes that we will not like to edit. And we can also have the risk of obtaining mosaics. It means that not in all cells the corrections are done exactly the way we want. This mouse should be uniformly pigmented, but it's patchy. It's a mosaic because the correction in this case of the tyrosinase gene has an occur in all cells. Of course, with mice, we can put this mouse to breed with a wild type uh, albino mouse. And in the next generation, we will segregate the pigmented and the albino phenotype, but we cannot do this with people. CRISPR-Cas is the future, and it's particularly the future with gene therapy. We can provide a template and we can cut near the mutation and hope that this will be correctly um, uh, triggered by these tools, by these genome editing tools. We can do this in vivo or ex vivo. We can provide these CRISPR tools directly into the person. We can extract cells from the person ex vivo and we can edit them in the laboratory before we can return them edited already, hopefully just resulting in a therapeutical effect. There are as many more than 41 uh, clinical trials that are ongoing at the moment in different parts of the world. And this is probably the closest that might be related with albinism. This is a degenerative uh, 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 disease affecting the retina. It's the lever congenital amaurosis type 10. And these people affected with this uh, uh, rare disease, oh, which, is, which is, by the way, rather common, uh, they eventually will become uh, blind. And we can in inject intraocularly, intravitrally, and subretinally, we can inject these CRISPR, these CRISPR tools, hoping that they will be editing the gene that is affected. How can we do this? because we are using viruses. We can use adeno-associated viruses, which we use them as shuttle to deliver the CRISPR tools to the cells. So I'm finishing this uh, short introduction on the CRISPR tools by just uh, reminding you again that uh, CRISPR in biomedicine is just one of many different applications. CRISPR can be applied to plants, can be applied to different types of animals, and basically there are a fantastic tool that can be used for modify the DNA. I would like to thank all the people in my lab and the different institutions that are providing us funds to do all the different types of experiments. And finally, I would like to mention our fantastic support we have and interaction we have with ALBA the Spanish Association in support of people with albinism. This is the last meeting we had in Seville last year when we could still meet. This year we had to organize the meeting online, as you can imagine, because of the COVID-19. Thank you very much for your attention.